guys! Welcome to my channel, or welcome back if you've seen my videos before. My name is Allison. I am a stay-at-home mom, and sometimes I try to do art things in my spare time. So I recently went on a trip with my husband to Europe. It was our first time in Europe, just absolutely loved it. And while I was there, I was on a mission to find cool, unique, art supplies that are very like specific to places that we visited. So I managed to come across some art shops while we were on vacation and I just want to show you a couple of things I picked up. So one of the first ones, I might butcher the pronunciation of this because it's French, but um, Chavant. You could tell that everything that they produce there is like, really good quality. So I wanted to pick up a sketchbook um, and they also had like a lot of watercolor paints. So I picked up this one. Uh, Carnet de Voyage, which actually means like travel log or travel book, I guess. Yeah, it was a really, so it's like this square, I don't know what measurement this is, maybe six by six. And so then you open it up and it's this nice like landscape. And the paper is just like really nice. Like you can f hear the quality <laughs> like when you uh, rub it. And it also is like pretty decently thick paper, you know. Um, and I think one thing that's interesting is it looks like like the corners of the paper it, it seems like they have a little bit of an angle but like they're rounded corners um, which I thought was like a really nice touch um, and it looks like it's thread bound yeah it was just like such a nice uh, sketchbook and I think the the cover seems to be like some sort of canvas material so that is really nice texture um, so yeah just overall beautiful like quality sketchbook um, and I'm really excited to fill this up with more drawings from our trip. The next item that I got was this really cool, it's like a travel watercolor set so it comes with this carry case and it's like this tin and it has like this little um, finger loop thing so that you can hold it and like keep it steady and it doesn't fall. So you open it up and it opens up like that. Um, there's this little there's this um, travel paintbrush. This actually didn't come with the set. I got that separately. So it came like this. And you had the option when you were in the shop to like if the, cause they had like a bunch of these travel sets um, and each of the palettes had like different colors in them. So if there was a color that you wanted to swap out with a different color, they had like their selection of watercolor half pans. Um, so if you wanted to swap one of them out with a different color, you could do that. You just have to talk to like the the guy at the cash register and he'll swap it out for you. They also had these with a uh, like travel watercolor brush um, in it but that was more expensive so I didn't end up going for that. I probably should have now that I think about it because um, then I could have probably used this while I was on my trip but I didn't have any travel watercolor brushes so I didn't end up using it while I was on the trip but I am excited to experiment some with this. Well, I've always wanted a travel watercolor palette like this. I have like the um Winsor Newton Cotman watercolor palette, but it's nowhere near as nice as this. Like this is like really nice quality. So very excited about that. And then last but not least, I actually, while I was in Venice, um, so those I got in Paris, those other two from Chavin, um, while I was in Paris, I stopped by this art supply shop. Like we weren't even, I wasn't planning to go to it. I didn't even know it existed, but we happened to be passing by it. And one was like, hey, Allison, that's my husband and Allison there's a there's an art supply shop let's go in there so we went in and they had like these tons and tons of pigments and the guy was saying that everything in the shop is produced by his family I guess they're all artisans of some sort they make their own like hand-bound sketchbooks and they make pigments and they make art tools and calligraphy and inks and like all sorts of stuff so it was really cool so I'm gonna go ahead and open this up He put like a little wax seal on it so that it wouldn't come undone until I opened it. All right, so, and then he put like a little seal on it with the, um, with my initial. And so apparently when you get one of these sets, they, he does that for you, he puts your initial on it. And there's the set. So this set, you would get six pigments of your choice for 45 euros um, and most of the pigments are five euros but then there are some more expensive pigments like 10 euros and 15 or 20 
Um, so he said that I, I asked him about it and he said that it was okay to pick um, two of the 10 euro pigments to put in this set. So I picked two. I think these are the two 10 euro pigments. But just look at those colors. Aren't they just so pretty? We had like the little formula posted in the shop of like how to make your own acrylics, like the, the recipe for that, and then how to make your own watercolor um, paints. So I'm going to go ahead and try that. I bought on Amazon some half pans and gum arabic, which is what you need for making watercolor paints. So yeah, let's do that. So I got all the supplies I think we need to mix up this watercolor paint. Here is the... Um, recipe that the guy had posted in his shop of how to make the different kinds of paints. So um, let's see how this goes. I've never made watercolor paint before. Hopefully it's fairly straightforward um, and not too complex. <laughs> I'm just imagining that it seems like it's really simple but um, I'm, maybe I'll find out that it, there's actually more to it than I imagine. So uh, let's just start with this one. Okay, so as we go through this paint mixing, um, I just wanted to say that as I suspected, the instructions did not seem to be as thorough as they could have been. Um, seems like they were very simplified. Um, I noticed that the earthy colors seemed to absorb more water and they seemed more dry, whereas other colors were thinner and flowed easier like the red ended up being really soupy um and and flowing really quickly um but the brown was really dry and uh it's like it, i think i had to add more glycerin um to try to get it to flow a little better uh so i think uh, the ratios of what you're putting in the paints probably need to be adjusted depending on the pigment um so i'm not sure exactly what you would adjust to improve the consistency like I don't know if that would be the water or the glycerin or the pigment I don't I don't know so if anybody who knows things about watercolor mixing um, can give me some advice on that I would greatly appreciate it and at one point I added some glycerin to the brown and it seemed to change the color of the pigment I'm not sure if that is a thing um, Maybe it was just my eyes playing tricks on me, but um, yeah. I did a bit of research afterwards and I picked up some tools for mixing pigments, so I'll probably do that in a later video. I picked up a muller and a glass palette, but the glass palette arrived broken, so I'm going to have to order another one. Um, so in a future video, I'm going to take another try at mixing these watercolors and then I'm going to try to do a painting with them. Um, so if anybody, again, has advice about mixing watercolors, uh, leave a comment for me. And if you, you know, if you have any resources for, to help me learn more about this, I would greatly appreciate it because I really want to enjoy these pigments that I got. Um, yeah, in the next clip, I will talk about my observations after the paints dried. So let's check that out. Hi guys, um, it is a different day as you can probably tell. I let the paints dry after I like, you know, put them in their little pans. Um, it took quite a while for them to dry. It took actually like a couple days, I think, like two or three days. I think they're usable, um, but uh, yeah, basically, you'll, well, you'll see. So here's how these red looks. It actually like kind of came out of the pan. And here's the teal. And I got the purple. Here's this like ochre color. And then here's this like deep blue. See, it just kind of pops right out. And then here is the dark brown. Certain ones dried down more. Like I filled up all of the pans, but then some of them, uh, certain colors like would dry down to about halfway. Like here's, 
here's an untouched pan of like with purple. See how like it's about half full. And then others dried down to even less and then some there were more. So I ended up having to like scoop out some of the colors and like try to mash them into some of the other pans. That's why these look so messy. The more earthy colors um, tended to be more brittle once they were dry. Um, whereas the other ones like this red, um, like the brighter colors seemed to stay together a little bit better once they were dry. This blue was really brittle too. Like you could see how it was all clumpy. Um, but yeah, I did a swatch test, some color swatches of each of the colors. And then, so then here is, here's just all the colors that I have. Oh, these were from, um, my palette, the watercolor travel palette that I got. So this is from that. And then this is like, like mixing together all the colors, doing a little, um, is it wet on wet? I think it's a wet on wet where like I do a little wa circle of water, and let it dry a little bit. And then you put some color on one side and then color on the other side and you let them kind of like run into each other and you see like what the colors do, which is really helpful for when you're actually doing a painting, then like you can kind of refer to that and see like what colors you want to use to get a certain effect if you're trying to like get colors to mix together and get them to to look a certain way. After I had finished um, my little paint mixing, I kind of felt like this video wasn't very complete. Um, like there wasn't really enough of a haul going on. Um, so I remembered that I actually had bought some other art related stuff. It's not art supplies, but it's art related stuff that I bought while I was on my trip. Uh, mostly I got enamel pins. I love enamel pins. And so, um, I actually really enjoy collecting enamel pins. Do you mind? Anyways, so I really enjoy collecting enamel pins from museums that I visit. So right here, this is the Venus de Milo which I saw at the Louvre. And then I got a Mona Lisa pin, which I also got to see at the Louvre. And then at the uh, Dorsay, I got some um, Monet pins. So this one w was from one of Monet's paintings. And then this as well, which apparently, so these are from the same, I believe these are from the same painting. Um, no, they're not. Sorry, uh, I take it all back. Don't listen to me. And then here is one of Monet's self portraits. There's that one. Uh, this is from one of the Renoir paintings. And then here is another Renoir. So these I got from the um, British Museum in London. Uh, this is a Greek pot. I don't recall if I saw this one specifically, but I did see some Greek pottery um so and I just I don't know I think all that kind of stuff is cool the next one that I have I bought because I love the painting I mean who doesn't love this painting it's the great wave so I got the the pin for the great wave I also got a tea towel for it which I thought was really fun they only display that painting um a couple times a year just because it's so old they don't want people like taking flash photos of it and degrading the photo, the print even more. Um, so they, they only um, display it at certain times of the year. So it wasn't on display when I was there, sadly. I got some cool postcards. Oh, this is um, from Saint Chapelle. It's like this really, really cool church that I learned about in, um, in art history class. It's just like, it's a really pretty building. Like they, it only took like five years to build it, which is insane for this time period. Um, I got a Mona Lisa postcard, of course. And then, um, oh, this, this was a painting that I saw at like towards the end of the Renaissance um, area in the Louvre. And it was like, like a painting that was like full of tiny paintings. Did you see that? I got up close detail shots of these paintings. They're very detailed, but they're tiny. They're like this big. So it's like this guy did like 40 paintings within a painting. It's crazy. There was actually, it was a two part painting. 
So one of them is the Louvre during Roman times, I believe, and then one of them was the Louvre during the Napoleonic period or whatever, something like that, showing the difference between the two time periods. And so, I don't know, I just thought it was really interesting. It's like you're in the Louvre, you're seeing a painting of the Louvre, and inside the painting you're seeing tons of tiny paintings. It's like very Inception, you know, very meta. So, uh, I thought it was interesting, I picked them up. And then, oh, this was another one that was like a painting of the inside of the Louvre, which I thought was fun. That's pretty much all of my artsy stuff. I did get some tea towels and stuff like that, but they're downstairs and I don't feel like getting them. Um, so anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I am going to be making some vlogs of my trip to Europe. There's going to be some sketches, there's going to be some footage of things that I did in Europe and pictures and stories and such and so forth. Um, so if you are interested in seeing those, you can go ahead and subscribe because those will be coming out soon. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Until I see you again, don't quit your daydream. And I will see you in the next one.